Hi, we're Ariel. And Michelle. And, and we're, we're the Board, board game, game Tutors. Tutors. Today, we're doing Just the Basics, Part 3, for the card game Good Cop, Bad Cop. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, Part 3, which uh, in which we'll be going over uh, how to set up the game. All right. So, in the last video, as you noticed, uh, the game was already set up for a four-player game. Um, but we're going to show you how to actually set up the four-player game. Now that you have seen all the different cards, um, we're going to show you what you need to do to get the game uh, all ready to go. So first, what do you need to collect? Over here, you need to have the Lead Investigator card. You need to have all the four plus Crooked cards, uh, the Kingpin, the four plus Honest cards, the Agent, all of the Equipment cards already pre-shuffled, two Wounded cards that come in the deck, and the two four plus Guns. So, what do you need to do? So, let's just set these cards over here for right now. So we're going to do the confined uh, spacing of all the cards, so that way I'll have enough space to reach, because I'm not that strong, so I can't reach all over the board. So, what do you have to do? You grab the agent, you grab the kingpin, put them face down, over here. You take the honest cards, and the crooked cards, that are all four plus, you do some shuffling, I'm not going to do tons, but let's just do this, and then do this right here just to make sure it's all mixed up together and we're done okay you take two cards off the top or off the bottom whatever you want to do two cards randomly from the deck that you just shuffled put them on top of the agent and the kingpin cards you grab this deck you put it aside for a minute take these four cards and you shuffle them so you don't know what the order is anymore and we're putting this like this. You can't really shuffle that much because it's only four cards. <laughs> but there we go. That's nice and shuffled. Now, this is a very important step. So you know there is one agent, one kingpin card, and you don't know what the two other cards are in this tiny deck. You take one card from uh, one of the cards from each, and you give it one card to each of the other players. So you put one card here for Sam. One card here for John, one card here for Michelle, and one card here for me, Ariel. Okay, the reason that you do that, you're like, okay, why did you have to shuffle those separately, shuffle the first deck, put two on top? The main reason that you need to do that is, one, because now you know one of these people is the agent and one of these people is the kingpin. That is important because if at, ever at any point during the game one person possesses both the agent and the kingpin cards, the game's over because everybody's trying to protect that one person and everyone's trying to kill that one person. So you get into this weird paradox shift, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's strange. So if that ever happens in the game, one person contains both the agent and the kingpin card, the game is over because you can't do anything. It's a logical conundrum. And I think the rules say that person wins automatically. Yeah. Because somehow they've convinced someone to make them the agent <laughs> and the kingpin. So they're corrupt and the leader, and they're honest and the leader. So Maybe the agent has been corrupted at that point. Yeah, I don't know how they could be honest at that point. But anyway, <laughs> so this is the other deck which you've already shuffled. We're going to put, you can do this in any order. Uh, basically, do that. Uh, do this. I know it's so engaging to watch me put cards down around the board. Like so. So yeah, you could give them like two to each person, or you could do it the way I just did. Doesn't really matter. You just have to do it randomly. And now, at this point, players could look at all their integrity cards, figure out what they are, and then uh, they would know what they are. And they could put their cards down in any order. So they could switch the order and stuff. But this is only at the beginning. After the beginning is over, after you've looked at your cards and see what you are, let's see what we are for good measure. Oh, look, I'm the kingpin. So I'm the kingpin. <laughs> I'm like, don't say it out loud. Oh, we're not really playing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the kingpin, I'm honest, and I'm crooked. So now I have some interesting information to reveal to other people when uh, that's that. So obviously at this point, I would determine which position do I want to put my kingpin card in. Well, I'm going to be risky and put it on the corner. So I'm going to put the kingpin there. 
there and there. Obviously, it's risky no matter what you do because you don't know what people are going to do. Just don't consistently, if you're the kingpin or the agent, don't consistently put it in one slot because then people will kind of figure that out mm -hmm. if you play 10 games in a row. <laughs> so that's that. And now I can no longer move these cards as long as uh, once I have decided which position I want to keep them in. And obviously, you don't want to just look at this card when you check your cards. Uh, if you're going to be sneaky, um, you need to grab all three if you're going to check what your cards are. Um, but, like, for example, if you keep looking at this card, people might figure out it's an important character. Yeah. So, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that. And now, everybody has their uh, integrity cards. So, the next step is... Okay, the equipment deck. I have pre-shuffled the equipment deck because I do not want to fight it like I did in the previous video, and not because the equipment deck is hard to shuffle for any reason. My arms just aren't that strong. So anyway, so then uh, it's already pre-shuffled. Everybody gets one equipment card. One, 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 and one. Okay, so everybody has one equipment card to go with their stuff. Nobody else knows about what their equipment cards are or what their integrity cards are. All right, so... Um, you arbitrarily pick a first player. Um, you put these wounded, one, uh, these two wounded cards in the middle of the table because nobody's wounded yet, and only the agent or the kingpin can get wounded. Everybody else just dies if they get shot. There are the two guns in the middle of the table because that is what we have in a four-player match. There are only four, two guns in a four-player match, like we discussed in the previous video. The equipment deck goes in the middle, and the person who is arbitrarily determined to be the first player, uh, gets a lead investigator card, and that goes in front of them. They hand it off clockwise fashion uh, when it's not their turn anymore, etc. So that is how you set up a four-player game. Now, uh, you're going to be asking me, okay, so uh, this, has the this game has the capability of going up to eight players, so how would you set up an eight-player game? Or anything like that. The only difference is... So uh, I have these organized in a particular way, which we're going to be showing you in the next video. Uh, but as you can see here, I have these cards organized according to player count. So if I have a five-player game, you would add this five-player gun to the mix there. Um, and before this is all set up as it is in a four-player match, obviously there's going to be one more space because there's going to be five players. Um, you would add this 5 plus card, this 5 plus card, this 5 plus card, this 5 plus card, and that's all, because then it goes to 6, so you wouldn't include that in a 5 player match. Set that aside. You would take these honest cards and these crooked cards, and if you remember, the original shuffling that I did with all the honest cards and crooked cards, you would do those including these four cards. And so, these would have gotten mixed in, um, and as you could tell, uh, these are only four, this is four cards. Sometimes when you shuffle the deck, um, it usually comes out even, but in a five-player match, for example, this is one example where this uh, strange, slightly strange thing would happen, where these would get shuffled into the deck, and this would, let's just say this was the fifth player's uh, hand uh, when it was randomly shuffled and distributed. So this is the fifth player's card, uh, cards over here, and he would also get an equipment card, like so. One second, there we go. Okay, he would get an equipment card, and this card, no one would see it because it's just an extra integrity card. It would just get put aside, and no one would look at it. So that's what would happen in a regular match. Obviously, I didn't go through every single thing that you do, but these uh, equipment cards, these four uh, equipment cards, these integrity cards, would get shuffled into that original batch of honest and crooked cards. Uh, in a five-player game, you would make it so you had the agent, the kingpin, and three other cards. You don't know what they are, but you would include them. And so, basically, that's uh, you would distribute those among the five different players. Uh, and then, uh, you would in a five-player match, like I said, you would have one card left over. You don't know what that card is, but you just put it aside without anyone knowing what that card is. So, uh, obviously, for a six-player match, you do the same thing. Seven-player match, you do the same thing. Uh, yeah, at the most, you'll only have four guns at any given time, so that's that. And obviously, when you get to an eight-player game, it gets pretty chaotic, and you really don't know who people are because there are so many integrity guards on the table that uh, uh, it's really tedious to go through one by one to figure out investigating every single person. 
All right, so that was everything involving game setup for the game Good Cop, Bad Cop. We hope you enjoyed this part three video of just the basics from our channel, the Board Game Tutors. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to our channel for regular updates uh, about more board and card games. And yeah, we thank you so much for watching and appreciate any comments, questions, concerns, or clarification questions that you have. All right, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye, everybody. Bye.